Hey everybody, this is Jennifer Madrill. I'm here in sunny Chicago, Illinois on a beautiful 1st of June. I just wanted to welcome, welcome everyone to our newest course. We have just today kicked off our Mobile Learning Strategies Design Sprint and uh, it will take us through the next three months. It's a self-paced course, so there's no pressure to try to meet deadlines um, to finish your projects or to get uh, logged onto the course or anything like that. As soon as you enroll, you'll have access to all of the materials. You can start working on, um, on your project and uh, take as much time as you want over the next three months to, to work on it. And so what I really wanted to do today is to spend a little bit of time talking about why we're offering this course, what you can expect to get out of it. And um, it's kind of off the top of my head. I don't have a lot of notes in front of me. It's just um, you know from me to you, what I think is cool about the course and why I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, so to begin with, why are we doing a design sprint? What is a design sprint? Well, we're basically, um, if you go on um, the internet and, and Google design sprint, you'll see lots of different approaches to what a design sprint is. But we're basically following the approach by Google Ventures. And I'll put a link um, in the post um, beneath where I'm speaking right now. I'll put a link for uh, what, what Google Ventures design sprint philosophy and approach is all about. There is a book, and you do not need to buy the book for the course, but Google Ventures has a companion to their website that describes um, in more detail their process of, of running a design sprint. And it's we've had to make some fairly substantial um, modifications to our design sprint because theirs is based on a five-day event, a live event, face-to-face -face with a group of coworkers. So obviously our context is different than that. We're online. It's a bunch of uh, all of us are all individuals working from across the globe on our projects. And so we've made adap um, adaptations to their basic um, approach, the five-day approach. We have a five-stage approach. So as I said, you can go through each of those five stages, not necessarily one a day, as they kind of advocate within their approach, which is probably a very practical approach when you're uh, in a business setting and all together, bringing everybody together, but we don't need to worry about that. And so that is the, um, the backbone of a design sprint. And then what is it that we're going to be working on? What's our focus? Our focus in this is designing mobile learning strategies. And so what does that mean? Mobile learning strategies are simply strategies that you can implement um, by you facilitating the learning experience on a mobile device. So most likely those in the class will be using a smartphone and we are another thing to talk about for before we get too far is this class is not a development class in terms of you're not going to be developing mobile apps. So instead you'll be taking off the shelf or out of the app store or out of the Google Play Store where whatever device, my mobile device you're using, whatever apps are already available and there for various purposes, we're going to spend our time figuring out how can we take those off-the-shelf apps and figure out a way to use them in a learning setting. And so most of the um, audience that we're targeting, again, this is Designers for Learning, so it's a service learning experience. So we're, again, targeting our favorite group, our adult basic education instructors and learners, um, and most of, as we, you'll see within the course, there's a lot of literature that we've provided to show that um, the majority of our um, target learner population has a smartphone, and if not a smartphone, um, a, a cell phone. And so the, the fun part of what we're doing this summer is trying to think about, again, I'm sorry, I'm in the uh, United States, so here it is this summer. Uh, from July to August. Uh, so what we're hoping that people will do over this, uh, take this opportunity over the summer, is to get creative and think, okay, how can we reach this audience of learners who may or may not have access to a computer at home um, or uh, one that they can access through work, uh, maybe don't have the greatest internet connection uh, on that computer, but they probably have a mobile device in their pockets. How can we leverage that opportunity to be able to facilitate learning experiences? And so that's the premise of our design project. And we go to, into quite a bit of detail in the class. For those of you that have taken part in our MOOCs before, a lot of that will be uh, a repeat. But for those that haven't, we do spend quite a bit of time talking about the need and the context and the learners that we're targeting. And so then after we get the kind of discovery part of that um, uh, out of the way, um, we're going to then focus in on designing the learning experience. So again, thinking of some type of 
um, instructional strategy and instructional activity that you could facilitate using a mobile device. And uh, we have a lot of recommendations on approaches to do that and first principles of instruction and things that you should consider when you're designing good instruction to begin with, the foundations of good instruction, but then making that, again, a twist, thinking about how can we use um, at the applications at our disposal to do that. So what you'll spend time doing then after you've thought through what strategies you might want to do, you'll spend some time digging into the app store and going out on the internet and, and um, finding uh, lists of apps and looking what they do. Is it something that the learner can read on or create, create a video or create content? Um, is it something that you could present uh, the content to the learner in various formats? Could it be a communication tool? And after you've um, gone through that, that process of kind of exploring what's out there, then you'll put pen to paper and create a storyboard of your learner experience, which you'll, you'll then prototype into learning materials. And then the, in the fifth and final stage of the design sprint, you'll actually test it with users. And that's going to be, I think, hopefully a fun piece of this experience, which we haven't done in the past. So we're not necessarily asking you to go out and find an adult basic education classroom. Um, in fact, it's fine if you want to just test out the, the approaches and the practices of user testing uh, with your family and your friends and your colleagues. Um, maybe somebody who lives down the hall, that's fine. But the idea is really to give you the opportunity to practice what it's like to create um, a user testing experience where you interview a user while they're working through your instructional materials and then to gauge their reactions and get their feedback and then how in turn you can take that information, amend your learning experience and turn it in as a final deliverable. So in whatever that was, three minutes, that's a quick overview of what the design sprint is about and what you'll be doing in it. Um, and then another thing that we've really tried to do, we get a lot of um, requests or when people are approaching us for finding out what, what's Designers for Learning all about, um, a lot of people are pretty intrigued by the opportunities to network with other instructional designers or folks who are maybe accidental instructional designers and don't have a formal background in it but are doing the job. Also, students who are, who are in instructional design programs and want to network with people who may be out in the field who can help them understand what the job market's like and um, what, what um, employers are looking for. And so we've set up within the course, we're using some of the apps that you may or may not be using as part of your design. We're using those apps as part of our course. So for example, let me see my list over here that I have written here. I don't want to miss some of these that are kind of fun. We'll be using Slack. We'll be using Padlet. We'll be using Discuss, which is a, a communication, um, uh, like a discussion board type feature. We'll be using Digo. And all of these things are um, either apps on your phone or things that you can use on a smartphone phone web browser. So again, we'll be using them in the context of our course, but then hopefully at the same time you're thinking forward, thinking how could I use this type of application in um, a learning setting. And then another fun thing we're doing, um, at least we think it's fun, is we're testing a new con um, course management platform. In the past, the courses you may have taken with us, we've been hosting them on Canvas Network, which is Canvas's and Structure's um, massive open online course platform. And instead, this is uh, a different, totally different platform entirely. It's called Thinkific. And um, Thinkific, you can access on, again, a mobile device. It doesn't have an app, but it's, um, it, it, has a, it renders quite nicely on your, uh, on your browser, on your smartphone, on a tablet. And so, it, again, in the spirit of let's, let's practice what we will one day uh, hopefully use in our, in our own practices, we're using Thinkific as a way to host our course and also give you a peek behind the curtain of what it might be like for you to host your own course using a platform like Thinkific. And there are many, many, many of them out there. In fact, when we started our uh, design of this course, we looked into many, many of them. And I think we would have been probably equally happy uh, whether we went to Teachable or there's a whole host of them, which we can get into at another, another time. But long story short, we are settled in on Thinkific for this course. And we really look forward to your feedback as a student and also having, again, those, um, your, your kind of your, your instructional designer glasses on at the same time thinking about how this works as a course management platform. 
Uh, and then the only thing else I really wanted to talk about before I uh, turn off this recording is I do want to make sure that you're, um, you feel comfortable going out on all of our social media platforms. We have face a Facebook group. We have a LinkedIn group. Um, we have a Google Plus group. We also have a hashtag for this course, this experience called hashtag um, mobile, um, mobile sprint. So mobile sprint, all one word. And so if you use Twitter or you're out on social media and you want to tag what your, um, your thoughts are back to this course, that's, that's one way to do it. Um, and then uh, the last thing I want to talk about is we will be having a few ad hoc live sessions. They're not scheduled right now. I'm just going to kind of test the waters and the, uh, see how things are going as far as people needing help or want to, it's seeming like people want to kind of uh, reach out and share and compare ideas when we sort of start, start to sense people are moving through the course and have, um, have things that they want to talk about. We'll go ahead and schedule um, some open houses. They're not going to be formal. They won't be lectures by any means at all. It'll be just opportunities to fire up our Zoom installation uh, where we can have about 100, we have 100 seats, so we can have up to 100 people. Well, I'll never get that many, I don't think. I don't think we've had one that large, uh, maybe ever. Um, but we'll turn on Zoom and just let everybody have a chance to talk to each other. And like I said, we'd like to schedule a few of those over the course of the summer as... Um, as things progress. And with that, I just want to take one last opportunity to thank everybody so much. We are so happy that um, people are um, participating with us and we're, we're getting a lot of traction in our courses that we're putting out. I just crunched some numbers this week and we've had uh, 40 to, over 4,200 uh, enrollments in our last three courses that we've offered, which is just phenomenal. So thank you very much for everybody who is, has enrolled. Um, and of that, it's about 3,500 individuals. So the cool part of that is of that 3,500, you're signing up for multiple courses, which is great because we really haven't changed them. Uh, the first three courses we offered, we really didn't change all that much. So we think it's pretty cool that um, you enjoy the experiences enough to, to come back. And so uh, hopefully then this one, this experience is quite a bit different than what we've done before. And hopefully we'll see a lot of those same faces coming back and, and joining us on this experience as well. We really want to thank you for your participation and, and for joining us. Uh, so with that, I'll sign off and uh, we'll see you on the course. Bye-bye.